Hey folks. Uh, welcome to the stream. Getting used to this a little bit. I've got a stream computer now. Well, I had a stream computer and now it's got its own monitor. So I'm still trying to figure out what's going on over there. I think I got that. Anyways, uh, how's everybody doing? Uh, hope you're doing good. Happy Friday. Um, this is not beer. It's Sprite. Sometimes there's whiskey with the Sprite, but not tonight. Ah, cool and refreshing. Um, so just gonna mess around a little bit tonight. Uh, not exactly sure what I'm gonna do. I was just kind of looking through my list here um, to figure out what I wanna do. Oh, I need to turn on the fan because it's getting hot in here because I got like eight computers going. By eight, I mean two. I should add that to my Twitch checklist, which I'll do right now. Um, which I didn't actually go through. Uh, here, we're just gonna do it this way. I'm not worried about the uh, order of these right now. So this is my Twitch che checklist, um, which is just a form. It's not even a form wrapped around. It's just a bunch of check boxes with a uh, little uh, things. So, um, I should actually go with this now. Make it a new vlog. Oh, I should do that. Um, I'll do it later. That's fine. I could stop at that. Oh, vlog I made of account. Give me a second. I am not set up. See, I should have gone through my checklist. That's the whole purpose of the checklist is to go through the checklist. And I did not go through the checklist. Wah, wah. Uh, so a couple other things that are different. I'm doing music with lyrics on it. I've got it knocked down to like 40, negative 40 decibels. So we'll see how this goes. I hope it's not too distracting. I just want something in the background. The, the music that I was getting the other time just kind of felt repetitive. So I'm trying some new stuff. We'll see what happens there. Um, uh, I've got a new mic, but I'm not using it yet. I've got the little audio stream deck thing from uh, Elgato, so I can like flip out really quick without having to look at um, whatever that thing is, OBS. Uh, I have too many accounts. See, this is boring, start of the stream. This is why I should have done this earlier. Checklists are a good thing. Also, I almost flashed a password if I had been doing this on the monitor that you can see. And I'm, but I'm not. So that's good. Uh, okay, I'm in over there. I guess we need to do that. Set the title of that. Set the title of the ABS card I did. Set the tagline for the main broadcast window, which I've got, which is just hacking around. Get licensed music going. Yeah, we're good. Close all Mac apps. Did that. Put a Twitter mess up, did that. Audio playback, sure. Mix, uh, looks, okay, maybe a little hot. Uh, let's back that down just a little bit. And I'm still experimenting with that. This is a boring start of the stream, sorry about that. Uh, check video, those are all gonna be okay. Close pie charm, we're gonna scratch pad, got that. So anyways, um, I guess we can actually look at this page uh, on the website. Oh, I should make this a little better too. Um, actually, can we do that? Yeah, so we can actually fix this a little bit. That'll be the first thing we do. Um, oh, the other thing that I'm doing is I've got, I've got like a 24 inch monitor, but I'm only using like the center portion of it to try and get a much better, bigger um, window for y'all to see. And it's kind of going to be a balance for me. I'm not sure if this is like, that's going to be way easier to read, but I might want to get where I've got a little more space to mess with. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, but let's see. So this was, what did this do? Oh, you know, what we can do, let's do this. Um, 
Now nah, it's gonna be too complicated. So what I'm trying to figure out if I want to do is this is my ideas list. And it's just a bunch of dashes. And I'm trying to figure out if I want to. Well, I think it actually this will already work. So I, I, the other night I built this script that I think actually took dashes. Let's look at this PyCharm script that I have up right now. So this, I'm just making a scratch pad thing here. Um, so process blob. So uh, here, get rid of those. Um, we just got a blob of text that I send to this little method called process blob. Am I hearing music in two places? Yeah. Is Wi-Fi going? Is that what's happening? Better. I don't know if you could hear that. Also, this song is not good. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, still trying to figure out the music. Like it's tricky. Um, but it'll take a while to just kind of build up playlists. I just need to sit down for a while and, and build some up. But we've got this. So, anyways, we've got this process blob thing going. Um, I'm doing a little bit of editing on it. So. This one matches anything that's just white space. And if that doesn't match, so if it doesn't match, it actually processes the line. If it does match, it doesn't process the line. And so what that means is it's gonna take out, um, it's gonna take out any new lines, any blank lines, new lines. Um, let me turn off wrap on that. So. If you just process this line by line and put and added line items, which is what I'm going to do, or li tags, um, you, you'd get one on here on line, line 95, but then you'd not get another one on 96 with nothing in it. Um, so this little thing right here matches for empty lines. So it, it's the start of the string and then space it, whoops. Uh, Slash S is for spaces, and then star is zero or more, and then the dollar sign is for the end of the line. So we're going to match uh, empty lines, is what that is. And then when we're looping through all the lines, if that regular expression matches, or if it doesn't match, then we're going to process. If it, and then there would be an else here that if it does match, you don't do anything with it, but we don't need to put that else in. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, I'm gonna take that up. I kind of, I'm still not used to Python. Like that looks a little too cramped for me. Um, so we're gonna do this. Uh, so we're gonna process. We're gonna process all the lines, and then line without dash. Oh, so we're making line without dashes. So we're 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 doing a substitution. Where again the. The caret is the start of, the, of a string. And then so the first thing after that is a dash and a space, which of course is what we have here. We're at the start of the string. Whoops, start of the string. We've got a dash and then a space. And then so the substitution is nothing. Um, and then we pass that the line. So that sucks out all the dashes in front of it. And then what we're doing, okay, so this, this is where we actually do the modification line. And so what I, originally what I was doing, what I had in here was URLs. So uh, well, actually we can do this. Whoa, ah, come on PyCharm, why doesn't that work? End, nope, page down, okay, that kind of works. The hotkeys are not the same. You will hear me complain about that forever. Um, so what this script does right now, when we run it, is it it just creates a, a line item for each one of these uh, lines. And again, it, it's gonna skip blank spaces. So if I run it again, we'll see the same thing down here in the output. And it makes a new line item and it makes a, a anchor tag with an href. And it doesn't actually put anything in there. Um, I, 
that would have been the next thing up in com comple complexity, uh, but I just manually filled this stuff in. Um, so that's what it's doing right now. But we don't need that. Um, all we need is the strings themselves. So this is actually pretty close to done for us. Uh, so this little two squirrely brackets is where the um, uh, is the target for the format stuff. So the stuff that comes in, which is this line without dash, which we just cleared, um, goes in. So really, all we need to do. Ah, uh, hotkeys. Is that, and what that should do is give us a bunch of lines. There we go. Perfect. So now we've got. Oh, do I have an example like common there still? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, and that's another thing. Like it didn't matter that there wasn't a dash at the at the start of that one. It just does. It just doesn't do the replacement because it doesn't find it. So um, it's cool if we can run it again. Um, and now what we've got is all of our text in line items. So we can come back here. So this was just pre-formatted text. Um, main content site header, main content. I thought there was another node there. We'll find that in a minute. Um, but so I'm getting rid of the pre-formatted formatted text. Uh, I'll leave those down there for now. So I don't need this pre. Some of the stuff is going to get a little messy for just a minute. Um, but so in the main, in this main content, I'm just going to make a UL and a close UL, and I'm going to paste in all those line items. I actually don't know if line item is the right term for those. Uh, list item, because it's an unordered list. And then if we refresh this, we get a bold list. There we go. Um, and then these other ones down here. So I can do the same thing, actually. Um, does the work, even though there's HTML in there, that's fine. Uh, it's still not going to do its thing. Ah, come on, buy a charm. Go here, go there, go there, go there. Again, I can paste however many like empty lines don't matter. So even though I've got three down at the bottom and one or two at the top, I run this. Now I've got these. I figured what I'd do is just uh, is just keep a list of the ones that I've finished at the bottom. Let me make another UL. Drop those in there. Uh, I, gotta, I don't know how um, formatty I want to get. I I'm less worried about that stuff now. Or unless, oops. That'll work. Uh, I still need to buy Sublime Text. I haven't done that yet. So now if we refresh this, cool. So we've got this stuff. And these are just things I'm thinking about doing. Uh, I'm just kind of keeping a running list of those going. And then um, when I finish them, I'm just putting them down here because I think it'll be fun or interesting to track. Um, so now I'm not sure what I want to do. Uh, checklist, wrong. Ideas. Uh, make a right click command that saves images to either the GIFs or the meme directory. Make a command to auto download videos into your GIF directory via the clipboard. That's interesting. Um, JavaScript alphabetized form. Um, now, you, you know what I think I'm going to do is, so I've got, I've been making a lot of GIFs. And what I'm doing with those is I just, I grab YouTube videos. Um, hopefully this is, I'm not talking about copyright, breaking copyright here. I don't think I am because it's transformative and I, I believe we're in the clear and people make GIFs all the time. So like, but whatever, if they come after me, I'm fucked. Um, so, and some, and I didn't make this one, like other people make them and I take those too and use them. Um, but so what I do is, here's a download script I did really quick. 
Um, I just pull these videos, but then most of the time they come down in MKV format, which the the software that I use, uh, which is called GIF Brewery by Giffy Cat, um, doesn't work with the MKVs. Uh, it needs MP4s. So what I end up doing is, um, is that centered? Yeah, okay. Um, so I go into my GIFs directory and my import directory and my videos directory, which is where all the source stuff goes. And uh, what I'll do, so let me find one. Um, I wonder if AHA take me with the AHA video. Yeah, so it's a WebM. Um, that's kind of weird. Uh, Oh, interesting. I didn't realize there was web M's in here as W as MKVs as well as MKVs. Um, now I'm just looking at all the ones I downloaded, but so you can see some of them. So uh, some of them I already pulled down that and made MP4s, um, like this corporate music, how to whatever. And when I do it manually, um, the way that I do these, like so, we'll go with this Beck colors, um, which is. See, I got a few of them right here. So what I'll do is I just use FFmpeg. Um, and then we do I for input, I guess, back and then colors. And then I don't worry about typing all the rest of that stuff. I just do back dash colors because I, I just want it sitting in close to the, at basically the same place. Um, so that I could, when I look at the directory, I see the MKV and I see the MP4. Um, but so this takes a minute, um, which is no big deal because usually what I'll do is I'll, while I'm working in Giphy Cat um, or Gif Brewery, sorry, uh, I'll have one of these things going, but I have to manually do that every time. Uh, and so what I think would be a better thing to do is write a little script that makes that, makes that happen. Um, and so I'm just going to do this in the scratch pad. Like I'm, I'm messing around with, with PyCharm now. Um, and let me get rid of that. There we go. Let's do some more. Uh, so I'm just going to do this here and I'm not, and like, I'm not going to do like test driven development or anything like that. I'm just kind of going to hack some stuff together, um, uh, and see what happens. Um, or it, it, like, it'll be, my testing will be doing it and then seeing if it goes. Uh, so PyCharm, we're gonna make a new file. Make mp4s.py. Cool. Um, and so this, I hope, is gonna be relatively straightforward. So, um, the biggest trick I need to do, so I'm gonna have to call out to ffmpeg. Um, the thing that I don't know is pi list directory. List directory. Deleting files, listing files in a directory. So this is my grimoire again. Um, it's just where I keep all my little notes about how to do stuff because I don't I don't code that much that often. Um, so this is my notebook to go back to. I I can search easily and find all this stuff on the web, but like if so. I just did whatever pi, which is my, gets me into my Python files, um, or my Python notes, and then list directory. So I, we'll see. How to list all files in the Python directory, how do I list it? There's a community effort, how to list. Oh, so here's lister. So this is actually a different thing that I got. Uh, when was this? That's from 2010. Um, also 2010, I've used a glob as it does pattern matching and expressions. Well, that's funny. Yes. Yeah, so, so again, sometimes oh, here's Lister. Uh, did it really need all that? Oh yeah. So this is, the, this is the stack overflow page. And sometimes I put the note in there. Um, 
do that now. Sometimes I put the note on there about where I got it from. Sometimes I don't. Um, but so I get I get to the same page. But like sometimes you got to wade through some stuff and figure things out. Uh, yeah, I like. I mean, that just that's more code. I like this less code. Um, even though this is probably more. Is file join only f f and path lister like that's that's just a lot of and also it's funny for me that it's there's not just like a like just a Python command for just like a, a single command that's like grab me the files in the directory and you can pass some arguments to it and get whatever it's basically what this is doing um, but it's a few different lines of code uh, so whatever we'll do yeah we'll just do the glob uh, actually glob's even better because. I don't, this is perfect. I don't want, I don't want every file. I only want MKV files and actually, and WebMs now that I see that WebMs are in there. Um, so I'm not looking for the full file list. Um, by the way, the fan's spinning up. You can see this is still going. Uh, the machine's getting louder. Um, yeah, because when I, when I run this process, I don't want to grab MP4 files. I'm just going to grab MKVs and WebMs, and then run the ffmpeg command on them with the same file name. So if I if I grab the whole directory, it would be giving me everything, including the MP4s. Not what I want. So this is cool. Uh, now the question is, I don't know. So we can do. Just gonna copy and paste it. Uh, glob glob. Uh, schedule file schedule. So we're gonna do. View files. Uh, we'll just go straight to the directory. So we're going to be in whoops, gifs. Nope. Gifs. Import videos. Uh, I've got a little command that I wrote called PWC. So PWD just shows you the working directory. Uh, PWC that I made. Um, which is, where is it? Oh, there you go. Uh, is just an alias that I made that you take PWD, you strip off, so PWD makes a, um, at the line break at the end of it, or a new line. So I don't want that. So this, this TR dash D and then slash N, maybe TR's truncate. Translate character, okay, translate character in string and a new line. I had to look this up, um, but basically this strips the new line off. So the, it's the pipes. So PWD, right, we get this, including the new line. And then we pipe that to tr-d slash n, this, and now there's not a new line there. That little really thing is the command line actually kicking down to another line, even though there's not another line, there's not a new line coming in there. That's the um, iterator basically saying, hey, it looks like that is complete. I'm going to kick you to a new line. Um, I don't think there's any other character in there. Um, but then what we do is PB copy is pasteboard copy. So on Max, if you throw something to PB copy, it goes to your, your, your clipboard, basically. They call it pasteboard. Um, so you can do... Uh, uh, if we echo hello world, it just says hello world. But if we echo hello world and we type it to EB copy, C O P Y, and we go to Sublime Text, I can do file, oops, and hit paste, there's our hello world. And notice how it threw that, it threw that new line in there. Um, so that's what my my PWC command does all of that. Um, it's just aliased over. Because um, when you do that, what you get is the directory that you're in. Oop. Like that. Long diversion. Anyways, uh, so in PyCharm, I'm just going to give it the full path here with slash MKB. And then for video files and video file, 
print video file together. So we get we get oh also PyCharm the thing that I am not liking or getting used to and maybe there's a way to change this is I jumped from this file to this file Ooh, did I get back but when I ran it it still ran the previous file you have to do this and edit configuration nope and then oh sorry I forgot how you do it Oh, right click on it and then run this and then you get the configuration option up here. I just, I don't like that. Um, but so here's all the MKV files. So that's awesome. Uh, now what we can do is make our command. Um, and what we're going to want to do, ffmpeg-i and then this is what we're going to start with. So we're going to use the format string to put our video file in there. And we're going to print our commands out, which will be the start of it. So ffmpeg, I, and actually I don't know if ffmpeg works with full paths. I'll bet it does. We'll check that before we run this. Um, this one finished? Yeah. So let, let's make the target that we think we're going to want. So what I think we're going to want is this same thing. We're going to use the full path again. I did it twice. Space, go, and then make this MP4. And so because I'm doing this programmatically, I'll just keep the same file names because that's easier. That's the easiest thing to do. Um, so do this. I'm just going to run the command to see if it works. Nope. Oh, because it's got there's spaces in the um, whatchamabob file pass. So I think there shouldn't be any quotes in there. So I think we can use quotes, he says, hoping. Try this. There we go. That was working. Uh, yeah, the um so now now we know what the end result is that we want. So I want that end result. And it was good that I tested it, because I I mean I could have tested it just by running it and seeing what happens, but like now I've got a really specific thing that I'm trying to build. Um I had a pretty good idea of what it'd be like, but I didn't think about the quotes, so it was nice to catch that before we built the whole thing. Not again that that, or not, again, not that that was a huge difference, but um, but we can actually come in here now and we can put quotes around this because we know we're going to need those quotes. And I'm just kind of watching the strings get built. And again, you could do this. And so over time, I may start doing this a little bit more with TDD. I just I'm so out of practice with Python that the overhead of having to do TDD right now is more than I want to take on, especially for something small like this. Like, even though that would be a good thing to do, it's, I'm just not there right now. So, um, and I go, I, I go back and forth that, because probably like, oh, I should do it and like, it'd be better. And like, and usually it is like, and I get that, but like, just not right now. Um, Or should we? All right, let's do it. TDD it is. Uh, TD mostly D. Um, so another one that I like that I set up a long time ago. And again, so I just, I grab notes of, of stuff that I'm doing that I think I might want later. Um, I'm not gonna do a Git repo on this. I haven't done that yet for this stuff. Um, prototype build test. See, when I've done this in the past, I've tried to do a single, and I'm not sure it's worth it, um, but I kind of like having a single file, that's for a full module. Where's my single file with main and test? Prototype builder, right output path, 
Prototype Builder Test. So basically what I did, and maybe I should rebuild this. Cause I like, I do like having TDD and also I, I like having single files. And then what I do is, or what this does is it will r like run the test suite. So when you, when you, when you execute the file, it runs the test suite. And if the test suite passes, it runs the main script. If the test suite doesn't pass, it fails out and it doesn't run the main script. And so I kind of like that as a cool little, you don't want to do that with everything, but with like some stuff it's like, it, it's, I want to make sure that all the tests have pa still pass because there may be some like weird environment, like I may have had environment differences or I don't know, whatever. Um, so, uh, I don't know. Um, I guess I could rebuild this. Like it's got a bunch of crap in there right now. Um, but it probably won't be too bad to get out. Um, so we've got the main, cause I don't know which parts of these were right outputs. Yeah, so this was actually testing, this was testing a, a thing. Um, <coughs> like it was testing actually doing something like writing to a file. So it was testing something that touched the environment. Um, and, I, and so I think some of the stuff up there was part of that. All right, so where we do this? Um, let's do this. Now the other trick is really what I want is this, but I have very little space for this. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna comment everything out. Whoops, ah, PyCharm. I'm just gonna comment all that out for right now. What is the hotkey? Okay, command in to command home. Okay. Command down arrow should do that. Um, what command in does. Command end. Ah, oh, see? Anyways. Uh, so I'm just gonna do I thought I'd start. Um, and I'm going to try and do the test first. Like TDD, right? Do the test first. So set up, I'm not going to do that. But like, so here we go. Um, actually, we're going to do this as its own thing. Test file. Uh, scaffold. T-A-F-F-O-L-D, there we go. All right. That is not a lot of space to work with, but it still kind of works. Okay. Um, and so when I was doing this, I was doing it as a class. I wonder if you can Call. Where do my tests? So I set up prototype builder. Because lots of like lots of Python code I see just has um, modules in it or methods or functions, whatever. Um, not inside classes. And so I'm wondering, like, I don't really that. Um, so what was I looking at the other day? Spotify, command line. No, oh, no, that was for Apple Script. Never mind. Um, I should look at more Python and more examples. Um, I need to read some Python books. Uh, all right, we're just gonna do this the way that I, I did it the first time. 
Does that work? Nope. I've got hotkeys set up that move windows to various places. Um, but, uh, oh, was that off the... Yeah, that was off, wasn't it? Um, yeah, so let's just see what happens. Um, class... Um, what do you want to call this? I'm just call this class tester. Class test. Unit test, test case. And we know that that, well, actually we got to run this. Right, so that's going to fail because unit test isn't defined because we need this up here. And so I'm doing I'm, I'm doing a, a Sandy Met style approach here where I wanted to stay one step away from green for every everything that I add. Um, and so green in this case is just the, the, the test run, passing, right? There's no actual tests in here yet. But like, this was the first thing I wanted. In order to get this to work, I needed to do this. It's like, okay, cool, I got that now. Um, and then so I don't know, I'm not gonna set it up, but what I, the next thing I wanna do is get the runner working, which is down here. Oh, where's run test? All right, we need to do this so we can see what's going on. Run test from, oh, here we go. So, oh, this one, so I've got, yeah, this is this is good. Um. I've got I've got two methods in here. So when I the first time I did this, I didn't have the methods down at the bottom. I just I would fire it like when you ran main, it would just fire through and run the test and then run the the actual main program. But some of the stuff I was doing was longer, so I could either get rid of the tests or if I wanted to if I was working on it and I didn't want to actually run the main thing while the tests were passing and once I got the green, you just comment that out. So it just made it a little easier to deal with. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that. Um, yeah, main, do stuff here. Okay. So, uh, let's do this. If name equals main. Uh, and also what that lets you do... Is that how I had to trigger it? Yeah, because you, oh, you can still call... You can still call this externally because it's got this main thing in there. It's its own class. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, um, so now I'm not going as much off of. Oh yeah, I kind of capture stream string io. Is gonna fail because we don't have oh oh yeah because we're not calling run test see um so I might have just put a whole bunch of stuff in there without realizing that it was broken so again line by line I want to make sure okay that that's broken now so I'm gonna come up here import from oh import string oh I oh I oh I oh we work to go. Also, that should be string. Um, cool, passing again. And so this is where we get a little, I wonder if I can do it this way. That kind of works. Uh, that's in the way, that's what that is. You can't see that. There we go. But I can't. Not so much with the song. Uh, so now what we're going to do is this line. Is that it? 
I think it's a mole nuts. There you go. So this line basically creates a test suite out of the modules or the classes that we don't have the class up here yet. But this load modules from sysmodules underscore name basically is going to load the class. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll do this because this class test is here. Um, so it's going to load all of this stuff into this suite, into this test suite. And then we run the suite. Normally, you just would call like the, the test, you know, just run the tests and it does all the stuff, but we want to capture it a little bit differently. Um, because what we want to do is when we want to be able to run the test, capture the results, and then look at the results and make a determination of what to do next after the results have happened. Um, and you can't do that when you just run the, no the test suite in the normal way. Uh, it, it basically just it passes and then it would just go. Uh, so that's what that's what these two lines do. Um, I'm just going to put this one in here first and see what happens. Um, you can't see that. Uh, sys is not defined. Okay. Um, uh, STU, right? Import sys. There we go. So we're running, we're passing again. Uh, so now what we're going to do is grab this line. And again, so I've got all this stuff. I don't, I, I figured this stuff, well, I figured. I found all this stuff before, and like there was some, I remember there's some stuff, like what, what it did didn't do exactly what I wanted to do. So there was some work that I had to do to get this stuff to go. I don't want to have to do or remember that work again. And I mean, it's, it may have been, it's been months or a year since I've touched this. Oh, well, it doesn't. So I, I built this in 2017. I modified it today, so I can't tell when the, like, we, maybe we can go back and see the notes from the last time I modified it prior to that was, but it's been a while. Um, but that's the thing with the, with the notebook or the grimoire, right? Is it's my outboard brain. Like this is still my stuff. I got it. Like as long as I don't lose that, those files um, and they're backed up, thankfully, and they're in GitHub, uh, not GitHub, Git, they're in a Git repo. Um, maybe I should put them in GitHub. No, because there's some work stuff in there. Never mind. Um, so anyways, we're, now we've got, so we, we're, cap, we're capturing a suite and then we're actually running the suite because we're going to run suite of the thing that we captured. And then we're going to, you know, back up one here. And then this is for a text test runner. I think there's, I can't remember what the other types of runners are. There's different runners you can have, but stream equals capture stream and fail fast is true. So like if we've got a hundred tests, I don't want to go through all hundred if one of them fails. Like as soon as it fails, I want to bail because I know that I'm good. I don't want to try and solve multiple things at once. I want to solve one thing. Um, but then we throw all that stuff into this results. And then what we can do is basically, I'm just going to grab this whole section at the same time. Um, again, see, I could have just grabbed all this, all this code. I just wanted to like relook at it too as part of this. Um, so I'm going to leave that there. Um, if the length of result failures or the length of result errors is greater than zero, so if there's anything in there, it chokes, it, 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 it bails. Um, and so what it does is it prints, an, prints a message saying, hey, we hit an error. It actually prints out the results of the test suite, so you actually see what happened. Uh, and then it does sysexit to, to bail. If the test suite passes, it actually just prints out the, the results of the, of, the, of, the te of the test pass setup. Um, it doesn't then execute anything else. Uh, originally I had the, the else, like I, I would fire main here, um, but now I do it down here um, and we'll do that in a minute. Uh, but so if I run this, you can see now, I don't have any, I don't have any actual tests in the class test. So ran test zero, but this this is the output of the test suite. This is just what would happen if you just did 
a straight unit test and ran it um, without all this rear roll. But this rear roll lets me do it in a single file, which again is maybe not the best idea. I don't know, but like I, it's convenient. I, I like it. Like I like the idea of I have this single file that if I want to like ship across, it, it's normally for stuff that I want to ship across and like maybe give it to somebody else and make sure that it still works on their machine before they run it on their machine. Like, and not for giant big things. Like, I really like this approach. Um, somebody somewhere will yell at me for it. All right. So we can prove this. Again, I gotta look up the syntax. Um, so yeah, it, it got down to okay. And then actually what we can do is just see, um, well, actually what we can do is build the main. Um, Oops. So define main, define run main. I don't want to try to do main. Print. Yay, it worked. And if we do this, run main. Yeah, it worked. So we're printing out a test. And so you don't have to print out the test suite, right? You could, if you if you don't want to see that and you just want to run your main, you can do that. Um, Depending on what I'm doing, I, I won't do that because we know that it's going to fail and, and bail if it if it doesn't happen. So like, if I'm shipping this to somebody else, I usually take that out. Um, I like knowing that it's there, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, nah, you know what? Let's get it. Let's get rid of it. Plus code. Um, and we know we can always get that back. Uh, once we, well, yeah, so let's, let's actually throw in a, a, a break so you can see what happens. Yeah, so like right now, whoops, we got to leave past there. Um, so right now the script's working. It's not doing anything. Like there's nothing happening uh, except it just, actually a lot's happening. It's building a test suite. It's running the test suite. It's not bailing when the test suite fails because it doesn't. Then it's calling main and it's printing us out. So it's, it's a lot of work to get, uh, you know, yay, it worked out. Um, but that gives us a test suite in the file that we can work on. The other thing I like about working on the file is because I can just do everything in the same thing. Um, but sometimes I like it having different, whatever, you get the point. Um, so now I gotta look up the syntax for set up, tear down, tests, files, create. Yeah, so, um, Got example string. And then that needs to be self. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, self cert equals. What's the difference between equals and equal? Oh, try that one. Um, this is where we need to pass. Oh, okay, so before we do that, what we need to do is um, I think this is how you initialize a class, right? Again, it's been a long time. So this is going to break. Failed one error. My class is not defined. So everything exploded. Cool, that's what we wanted. Um, so now we're going to do class. My class, pass, go. There you go, yeah, it works. So it's not doing anything, but we're, again, line by line, I wanna make sure that stuff works. Um, and that's that's not as important right now, but it's just the habit that I have when I'm doing this coding stuff. It's just like, step, 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 and check, if I'm if I'm doing this and I'm checking, I'm gonna check every, every step of the way. Uh, so we've got my class, uh, and then what we want to do, right, is test self assert true. We want my class uh, mc dot is true. So we're just I'm not gonna test a string. We'll just do a um, 
need a... Is it this after that? I can't remember. Yes, it is, I think. Uh, so now we're going to just check and see if my if MC, my class, fires back a true on uh, called it is true. Doesn't, right? Error failed. Error. Here's where the error happened. Blah, 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 blah. My class object has no attribute is true. So there's a couple, like, depending on how, um, not how strict, how adherent to the principles I want to be, what I might actually do is just do this, def. And so again, I'm not doing anything other than basically making the class. So I would just do def is true. Pass. And not try, I'm not trying to build out the answer or to the, the re response to the method. I'm just building the method because I want that error, I want that error message to go away and I want to see what the next error message is. Next error message, assuming I got it right. So that the attribute now exists because I, I'm not getting an error, but now it just says none is true. So I've made progress. Um, I've, I've cleared one test and I've jumped the next one. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've tried to jump up, like to actually just go through. And again, it's most of the time you get it right here when you go return true, right? Um, it are working, but like sometimes when you write all that stuff together, but you're doing something even just a slightly more complicated, you, you screw it up somehow. And then you have to go back and you have to like rewire your brain a little bit because you, you, it feels to me a lot easier to make progress in one direction than to try and jump and then have to go back. Like the, the cognitive load of having to do that and it's not awful, right? But it's it's more. And I find that when I'm in the flow of stuff, just like running through it is much easier to do. Um, and it's just and it's just like it's it's this. It, it helps me keep focus. It helps me keep a little bit down. And also it doesn't because it's a little. It's also just a little jarring. It's like being just jabbed just a little bit in the ribs. It's like oh wait shit that didn't work. Um, why didn't it work? What was the thing? And then I, and then you have to figure out like th there's three or four different parts. Oh, I gotta go look at those. With this, you just kind of you keep going and line by line by line is basically what it is. Um, so, anyways, we're we're done. We've we've got our we've got our framework. We got our scaffold now. Um, and like it's a decent amount. Of, and so I sh this actually is much more of the scaffold that I should have built rather. And I'm gonna paste this in in just a second rather than this one, which did a whole bunch of stuff, like my guess is one of the first times that I built this, um, the same scaffold and built this one, this was one of the first things I did. And so I just copied the whole thing in there, but there's a bunch of code that we don't need for the scaffolding. Um, so uh, yeah, no, for most things you shouldn't do this. It makes it harder to code since you keep having to jump up and down on the file and switch between things and test. Yeah, so. I'm even telling myself there, like, hey, probably don't do this. Um, and so maybe we'll go and, and, and do the tests and do them back and forth. Um, well, I guess that's, okay, so I guess that's something that would be nice with PyCharm is keeping it in, if, you, if you're firing off your test file, you can make changes in your non-test file and fire off your test file and have that happen. I've got code in Vim that does that for me. Um, I, can, I can have a test file up in a... Um, uh, a, a primary file up and I can basically tell them which one I want to run regardless of which one I'm in. So, but I see now some of the logic of why PyCharm would do that. Uh, this is basic template V1. Basic template V2. All right, so now that we've done all that, do we actually want to use this or do we want to build test the old fashioned or like the, you know, the way, the standard way? Um, you know what? I'm, so this is whatever, we're just messing around. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and build the test the, the, the second file way. And part of the reason is because I've only done that a few times 
Um, Cause when I first, I first started doing Python was when I was kind of not, I was doing less and less programming. Um, so we'll do that. Um, do I want to do that? I keep, so it's funny cause I keep not doing the thing that I was originally going to do and I keep backing up, but like the stuff that I'm doing now, like building that test scaffold and, and or doing, figuring out how to do this is all the way is I mean, that's TDD. That's like doing the tests and I'm doing the, so that, that is part of the development. Um, this isn't, this could feel a little bit like, um, not wood shedding, um, not carpet bagging, jack shaving. Uh, but it's, this isn't this, cause this is me. This is setting up the process to be able to do the thing. And that can get into the but I don't, I don't think that's what this is. Also, this is stuff by and large, I'm only going to have to do once again. So like I edited this one, but like I copied all that code. I didn't have to go figure that stuff back out again. Um, so and we've got this in now. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it the old fashioned way or the, the way that people really do it. So, and this is funny cause I, Super don't remember how to do that. Uh, pi unit test. Uh, let's see. Oh, looking at XML elements, yay. Um, All right, give me one second. I just want to make sure I don't have anything. Unit tests, news. All right, so this is funny because I'm not 100% sure this is the right way to do this stuff. Um, but we'll see if it works. So we've got make MP4. We're gonna do make MP4 test. Should I be using underscores? I can't remember if Python's supposed to have underscores or not. Um, so import unit test. This is the one that messed with me the first time I was dealing with it. Oh, that you do want underscores, don't you? Yep. Because you need to do, so I want it, you import the file name and it's, it's coming from the same directory. Um, so we're gonna rename these. Once we find where rename is, refactor. Rename. Ah, oh, silly. I mean, probably not. Search for references. Uh, this does a lot of stuff, doesn't it? I just, I don't really do Python development. I don't really do development. Uh, welcome to live coding with somebody who doesn't really do development. Somebody who just kind of bangs around and sees what happens. Uh, so we want to import, I think, right? So this, I can import that that exact file, right? Is what I want to do. Yeah, okay, so it knows it. Good on you, Uh What am I doing? We're gonna do, okay, so we're gonna close, oh, all right, close it. We've done our process lines thing. We don't need to do that right now. So we're gonna run, make MP4 test. They worked. No, I like that over there better. Um, class move test, Whoop. unit test. My ear itches and my headphones in the way and I don't want to move my headphones. Um, yeah, see how much less code this is? It's probably the right thing to do. Um, I worked so hard on doing that single file thing though. Um, uh, def test 
uh, I'm going to call it tone because all I want to do is um, now how, so here's, here's the thing that I am not as familiar with. So I think if I just, if I just import moves and this, I, I legitimately don't know the answer to this, but if I just import moves here and I've imported, I'm sorry, if I just import moves, any of the methods that I have just sitting in the main or the root of moves, I just have direct access to. Is that right? Oh, unit test that tech, test case. I didn't do that. Uh, I'm just gonna pass this just because I want to watch it go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, self assert true. So make MP4 is the name of the class. Can you make can you make the this this the same thing? If I find four, I can. Oh, ha! See, gotta do this. If name equals main, then unit tests dot main. Ooh, main. Run all. There we go. Fail. Um. Oh yeah, it's funny. So the when you run it in the single file, it loses the color. Um, I'm sure there's a way to, to pass that, uh, or to recreate it or whatever. Um, so this is, this is better. Uh, so now the question is, I'm just going to shove all that stuff down for right now. Excuse me. Um, So if I run again, it still should go, right? Run test. Oh, it ran one test in zero second. Okay, wait, wait a second. Oh, so MP4 is coming back. What if you make MP4s? Failed one error. There we go. Make MP4s is not defined. So if I do this, do I have to save it? Directly. See, this is where I get lost, um, but we'll figure it out live. Uh, hey folks, I don't know what I'm doing with Python right now, but I'm gonna figure it out. Uh, so make MP4s. Does that work? Yep, okay. And I know there's a way to make you not have to do that. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, I've got it going. So make true. Cool. Um, and so this gets into one of those things where I got to figure out how to test it, which is interesting and so like part of like part of me one of the ways that i would have used to have tested this stuff or when i first started doing tdd one of the first things i would have done is tried to make a method that just grabbed the mk4 files for example um and so i would have tried to structure and set that up or whatever and then maybe i would have tried to figure out how to um do the renames and then maybe I would have tried to figure, and then like I would have, I would have built up from that direction. The other thing I learned from Sandy Metz is flip that and start at the end. So I want to have a command that we created here that does this. So I'm going to call it like. Okay, we know that works. I, that was me testing the test suite, so I know that that works. I can actually get rid of that, right? Um, I just want to make sure that was me just making sure I actually had things lined up and knew how to do it. Again, I could have, I, if I'd written other code over there, I would have been swimming in that for a little while trying to figure out where it went wrong. So again, step, step by step. Um, so what we want to do 
is I want to define a test final string. I'll probably come up with better names for this later, but again, I'm not I'm not super worried about. I'm not going to spend much time right now trying to worry about the the good final name for this. I just want to make progress. And as I make progress, I'm going to get more information that I can use to, to refine stuff. So refining names of tests, fine. Um, like doesn't doesn't hurt me at all. It helps me, helps me make clarity. And But if I'd spent a bunch of time trying to come up with a name, I might be a little more attached to it. Like, ah, oh, it's the thing and I don't want to move it or whatever, but like final string. Like that's just what I'm working with right now. So self assert equals uh, I forget which one you're supposed to put first. So I'm going to put this, whoops. So I'm going to put this one first. I hope there's not single quotes in there. I don't think there is. There you go. So we want that. Oh, actually, I guess it makes more sense to do make mp4 dot final string. Again, at like, I'm just, I'm just, so right now I'm trying to break. So I'm, I'm green right now. Oh, why is that actually red? That should be green, like a, that should be green. Like if you're gonna change the color of the text and it passes, make it green. Um, that's really strange. Cause like visually I'm gonna see red and my initial react, my like, I don't know if you've ever seen the thing with like colors for color words. Yeah. Um, So if you if you're looking at these words, red, brown, blue, black, yellow, green, orange, purple. Easy enough. Uh, now find me. Here you go. Oh, go away. Now read those words. I'll give you a second. And like, name, name, speak the word, not the color. Uh, blue, green, yellow, brown, gray, pink, black, white. Wait, 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 this is not what I'm thinking. Oh, say, sorry, say the, sorry, say the color. Cause that's what we're trying to do is, is get the color. But the words are gonna fight us. So red, yellow, green, I want to say brown, but it's purple. Uh, light blue. I want to say pink, but it's black. Black. No, wait. All that's to say, if it passes, this text should be green because color is a really strong indicator for us. Um, so go for it, unit test people. Uh, and maybe there's a way to do that. Oh, green is clear color for past Python or green colored output. Here we go. Let's see if somebody else is doing this. Marking objects. I'm just being able to tell if it's wrong. Granted, read bar. Is there a way to get the color output for uniform test? Pi 2 type par RG. Does not work in Python 3 though. Using a method very similar to Robert's answer, I have today at least a package that enables color output. It's called Color Runner. I mean, we messed with one of those at one point. Um, PyTest. Python M unit. Wait. That's all PyTest. And run your test to see the color. Okay. Oh, you gotta run PyTest. Uh, oh, wait. Hang on a second. So, terminal. Dip, install. Whoops. Ah, test. It'd be so cool if this works. Nope. Oh, well, it failed. Uh, of course it failed.
course it did. All right, well, we're going to find out in a second. So red, so red is good. We like red when it fails. Um, and so module make mp4 has no attribute final string. So again, I'm just going to do def final string and pass it. Still got an error, but it's a different error. Uh, none is not equal to the giant string. Um, so now we're going to do is we're going to get uh, another Sandy Metz uh, phrase, shameless green. So I am not going to try and do anything other than to get this test to pass. And the absolute simplest way to do that is to return, whoops, oh, would have been so cool if I had gotten it right right there, is to copy that, paste it with the right key. What's going on? Copy, delete, paste, thank you. There's a comma at the end. We don't want that. Run. Hey, see, it was red, but it passed. No, wait, what happened? Oh, deprecated warning. Please use assert equal instead. Okay, so we want it to equal instead of equals. Okay. Test passed. Hooray, it's still red. Um, but so that's that's the 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 shameless green. Like I'm not gonna try and do any coding at all. I'm just gonna straight throw that string over there because I know that's what I want. And then like to to kind of keep moving it a little bit, depending on how on how I want to do it, I'm gonna do return string just because I want to move it into a variable. So return string. Now I'm gonna yank it up here. Return string. I'm gonna run my tests. Still green, even though it's the wrong color. And now what I can start doing is actually working through how I want to do this. Um, and so the two things that I think I'm going to want are um, uh, initial file. I N I T I I N I T I A L file. Uh, and a path, how about that? So, and now I've made a change, so I'm gonna run it. It's gonna break. Because final string missing one required positional argument. Cool, got it. Again, I'm gonna do the simplest thing possible, so I'm just gonna copy, I should've used a better, it's a very long string, that's what that is. So now I'm just going to copy this, paste it in there. Like I could just do, like if you wanted to go super whatever, you could just put like an X in there. So, or like single quotes here, like that's going to get it passing, right? Because we've passed in uh, uh, an attribute, attribute, what's it called? Argument. We passed in an argument with nothing in it. So you like if you want to get super fine grain with the one steps at a time, you can do that, and then you can paste in your thing. Um, did I just do the whole thing again? What is going on with my copy and paste? Same thing should pass because I'm just passing in an argument. But now, and, but now what I've got is the is the loaded. Um, the argument loaded up. So I'm gonna come back over here. And just think, kind of think, it's like I'm talking about this a lot, but just kind of think about this step by step and how kind of quickly you can bounce through this stuff when you're not making big structural changes and messing around with stuff. So I've got this initial path. And so now I know that I want that to go, nope, come on, PyCharm and your weird Nope, there we go. So what I want, why does that feel weird? That quote disappeared. Uh, so now all I wanna do is I wanna drop that. So I'm gonna stay, and, and so the other one from Sandy is saying, like you always wanna stay one, no more than one step away from green. 
But really what I want to try and do at this point is, is stay green. So I don't want to, I don't want to make a bunch of changes and I don't want to introduce any changes that make me go red if I don't have to. And so I don't have to in order to do this. I hope I don't. Like if I go red in this one minor step, then I realize, oh, I messed something up. So I'm going to do this format here. And what should happen, I believe, is if I take this path, I should stay green. So I'm going to paste that. I'm not going to paste that. I'm going to... Wow. I think I know what's going on. Uh, I've been using a Windows machine and the keys are flipped. And... PyCharm uses that control instead of the R, and so I think I'm keeping my finger on the wrong, the wrong thing of a bob. Let's see if we stay green. We did not. We blew up a lot. Uh. Oh, return string. I I blew stuff away there, so I'm just gonna back out. I'm just going to undo, because that was way more, that, that's not what I was expecting to happen. I was expecting that to work. Oh yeah, somehow it got all that crap. All right, so now I think I'm green again. Yep. Try that again. That's better. And then we're going to come over here, do format. For MIT, right? That, that, and now. Oh, put in a double quote there somewhere. No, maybe. Aha, right there. See, again, I could have, like, if I tried to, if I had just done a whole bunch of crap, it would have taken me much longer to find this. I've only got one thing really that I'm working with right now. That's the other thing that's great about that. It's like, there's the one thing I'm working with. So it's like, either the input or the output or the, you know, whatever. So here we go, ready? Green. Um, cool, and so now I'm gonna do the next thing, right? So I want, and I can, I can actually do this either way. I could just pass the other string here um, right, because we know the final output path. It, I don't, so for some reason right now, it feels more like I should, I should put it, but I could do this either way. Like there, there's the, there's the input and the output and they need to have parity in their, or what's it called? Resonance? No, um, not parity. Um, thing of a bob where they, ohms, impedance, matched impedance. So if I change one, it's gonna break it, right? So if I do this, it's gonna break, right? But if I leave that the same, and I do this, it's also gonna break. Doesn't matter which where I put this. Um, for some reason right now, it feels like I should put it on the other place first. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, output path. Now it's gonna break. Breaks. I should go up and verify the error. Yep, missing one, one positional, whatever. So now I can go back to my test. Ah, yep, I'm definitely using the wrong control C. Now I can put this in, run that, we're back to green. Cool. So I still got my return string here. I should be able to do this, put this in. Again, see this is this is more the speed that you'd be going, right? Still green, made it. Uh, that's FF impact. That's everything. So that okay. So that's that's good. This this is now passing. I I have this going the way that I want to, um, and now I'm ready to move on to the next method, um, and so. Here, here's where I, you have to stop and think a little bit. It's like, okay, how, how do we want to do the next method? Well, I need to make a bunch of these calls. So how do I want to do that actually is the question. Like, it's always so weird for me working with the file system. Um, Cause there's, there's some amount of stuff that I heard that basically talks about don't, 
don't interact with the file system. And some people talk about like making stubs and making something else that's like stubs that I can't remember the name of. Cause like, cause like, so I, I don't really, I don't really need to test glob. Right. Oh, but what I do, oh, so what I do need, to, okay. I, I know the thing that I need to do. Um, I need to turn this string into this string. Um, so I'm going to start in the test suite because we're going to make it go red. And if I, so if I, if I start making a, if I start making a thing over here, um, replace extension. That's not going to make it go red. I want I want to get to a red state to then get back to a green state. I don't want to write code. If I'm green, I don't want to write more code that's outside of my test suite. Um, I, I want to get to red and then say basically one undo away from red uh, to, to get there. So we're define, replace, extension. Um, and so the other, and then we can do this again. Self sort equal. Uh, and so right now, just to, to do it the easiest thing, I'm just going to do make MP4 place extension with nothing. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to put it to nothing. Like again, just, this is just the simplest thing I can think of right now. I can't really, I can't really think too much about what, my, what I want my next step to be. I think I just want to get the method in there. So this is, this is the simplest thing really that I can write that's going to make me go red, right? So it's an assert equals with nothing happening. And why didn't that, oh, see? There we go. So now we know make, uh, make it before has no module of that. Okay, so we're gonna go do this. Let me speed up just a little bit, just for, um, I think you guys have it. So pass, still gonna fail because I'm not passing anything back. So again, I'm just gonna return, whoops. Return nothing. I'm passing. If I move that up just a little bit, will it? There we go, let's see the results a little better. I just want that blue line because I, the blue with the red and then the blue down a lot of, if I see that blue, that's what, it, that's where my eye is keying into red and keying into green now, um, because I just see that blue down there and that's close enough. Um, so now I want to go back here and my target is this string. So that's what we're, that's what we're targeting for which is going to break. There you go. Assertion error, nothing is not equal to that. So cool. So now I'm going to come back here. I'm just going to paste that. Whoops. <laughs> it would go even faster if I could do that. So now we're back green again, right? I haven't really done much, but just making progress. And so now I know that I want to pass in order to get to this, I need to pass this one. So now I'm just going to put this in here. And again, I'm doing this in a slightly different order than I did last time, just because this feels like the back and forth that I'm doing. But now the test is going to go red. Replace extension takes zero arguments, but it was given one. So now we're going to do um, input path. Green again. And now, uh, so return string, whoops. I'm just gonna start moving a little bit of stuff around. Like that, still green. And so now we can do the actual replacement. Uh, so now we're gonna need And it's wild because this is a lot more like this is taking a lot more time than it would take me to just to hack the thing together. 
but it's really good practice. This is like, this feels like doing scales if you're a musician. You're not really performing a piece, but you're exercising. And you're getting incrementally better every time you, you get your hands on the horn and you're, you're, you're moving. Um, and practicing drumster, practicing dynamics. And like, you can practice different things while you're doing this too. Like one of the things in um, band, I still remember the time. So like when, when we do scale, when you first start out doing scales, you're just like, you're very much like, da, 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 da. Um, we went to a festival at one point and uh, the, the uh, woman doing the master talk was like, how do you guys do scales? And I think she had somebody come up and like, nah, nah, nah. and she's like, well, what if you did it like this? And she like did this, like, it was beautiful. Like she did this like great dynamic range of the volume and like the tone and everything about it. And we all just kind of went, oh, shit. So you can practice on your scales, right? You can practice in the middle of this stuff. It's great for that. Um, so highly recommended. Uh, where's it going? Import RE. All right, so now, and this is good for me too because like I've got a test suite behind my RE stuff now so I can like get there. Like I would've gotten there anyways, but like I'm, I'm way more confident in what I'm writing here, even though it's just kind of a throwaway script. I'm doing this, and again, practice. Um, so now we can do this, and this is another one that I like that I picked up from Sandy, is I'm just, I'm gonna write the same variable here, and um, I'm gonna try and make it work. So the first thing is I'll just write the code and I'll run it without actually changing it. And you'll see this in a second. Um, so how are we gonna do this, Ari? So, I wanna get the, the extension, the .mkv, which should be the last thing in the file. Regular expressions, I'm not gonna get too much into right now. And I wanna make that a .mp4. And I wanna make that happen on the input path. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this, even though I'm not doing anything with this code. I just wanna make sure that I didn't do something stupid or something like this, where I broke my code and I thought the test, maybe like, oh, did the test suite break or the what it like, I just want to run it and make sure that the code, the line that I put in works. Or it like compiles basically, I don't know, it's not the right term. But now what I can do is now I can actually test it and to test it, this, this is one of the things that Sandy talks about is like staying one step away from green uh, or one undo away from green. Uh, so you go, you go shameless green, and then you you keep you keep working towards a proper green, but you stay one one step away from it. So with this one, it's not that complicated. But like the I the the way that I'm going to be one step away from green, because of what I could have done. Well, this is the simplest thing. I, like I could have done this thing, I could have done this line and replaced the one that was down there. But then it was kind of like. You gotta bounce back out of it and it's a little bit more complicated. But with this, I just comment this out and run it and I got it. Like, and some, cause sometimes you have to do more complicated stuff than this, right? Um, and now I can delete that and I've got, I've got it in play, right? So I'm good to go. My test suite's still green. But if for some reason, I goofed, so I run this right now, and it's green because right now I'm, I'm going off the, the hard-coded string. But when I comment that out for a second, it chokes. I can start messing around in there a little bit, but I'm confident that I can always go right back here and get back to green. So I've got that bail, basically. Um, and that, that lets me like, get back to green and make sure that something else isn't screwed up, right? I can go here and be like, okay, it really does work, right? Okay, cool. And then back up and be like, okay, now let me start digging in really here and let's see what's going on. Um, and we know what's going on because I did that. Well, there you go. Uh, cool, okay, so what are we doing? Um, so I've got, I've, I've got my string maker. We're gonna call it string maker now. And this is another thing, right, about um, the test suite stuff. So I can, if I really wanted to, I could like test it like, ah, oh, I broke. Um, but like, I'm good with that. Test string, whoops. 
Test string maker, string maker. Go. And we're green again. I just like that name better. Um, and no problem changing test names. Like that's this is that's more appropriate than final string, um, to me. Uh, so that's my string maker. I, I'm getting those coming out. I've got my replacement happening here for MKV files. And so now really, it's not. Um, I'm actually just gonna chew all this stuff up. Should have done that earlier. Uh, oops. Let's get rid of this. The green, green. Um, so now all I really need to do, right? I think is just run. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to try and test glob. When I first started doing testing, one of the things I would have tried to do is um, jump files. Did jump files. PyCharm, I do not understand you. You are not in my head or my fingers. Um, one of the first things I would have tried to do is been like def test file list. And then whatever, array equals, uh, it should be a list I did Perl a long time ago. And then I would come up with like six different file names and I would have built another directory and put the files that I wanted to have in there to start with and then run the process and then run the test looking against those files on the file system to make sure I got the right ones coming out. And like basically what you're doing there is you're, you're retesting glob. Um, and there's like sometimes maybe you need to do that, but like in this case, I'm really just going to hit the MKV files. So I don't super need to do that. Now here's, here's another syntactical question. I don't, I make it not as good on four and I'll look at this later, but is, so I've got these things defined. Like I could also do a, a def of the like process and process, right? Uh, so passing yeah and then I could come down here and do if I guess that's how you should do it See, I don't know if this is the you know the the right way to do this or the the Python preferred way to do this um, or yeah I actually do okay I do like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah so wait a minute never mind never mind I get it I get it something just clicked because now I can come down here And whatever, I'm just gonna print that with dot mkv, and that should give me the other thing, right? Oh, I'm still running. I'm still running. Uh, bu -bu 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 on this one. There you go. Um, I'm getting to like PyCharm, maybe a little bit. There you go. Uh, so, so this this comes down to where you want to try and test and how you want to try and test. And so, I'm not I'm not interested. Why is it red? There's a warning there. I don't know what that is. Oh, because I don't have something there. Um, I I'm not interested. Like I'm not interested in trying to test glob or try and test that my glob is right necessarily in terms of the string that I'm going to use to get it. By the way, I'm not going to try and get both um, uh, MKVs and, and, and WebMs at the same time. I'm just going to manually switch that uh, just in case you were wondering. So where is pi glob? Files in the directory. Uh, cool. And PQR. I like trying to keep things in alphabetical. I like trying to spell things right. Oh, that's I'm so on the wrong key right now, man. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, file list. Glob that glob.
And so... So again, my PWC gets me um, that star dot M K B. And so like my test for right now is going to be um, is going to be just a manual like, hey, did I get this right? And somehow, how do you switch it? Shift R. Okay. Does that work? There you go. Um, so there you go. Cool. So now I've got, so there's, there's my input file, right? So input path equals file output path equals whatever our thing was replace extension with, whoops, try this with input path. I could have done with file too, but like I like the movement of it. Um, and so just to watch one of these, these should be MP4s. There you go. And then what we do is command equals string maker with input path and output path. Print command. There we go. And so just to do one. Oh, you know what I could have done? So here's the question. How much time do I want to spend on this? Um, I think I'm about done with it for now. But the other thing that I, I, I'm realizing that I could have done, I could have, could have done, is... Oh, and actually, see, this isn't... I don't have to, I don't have to build a test for this. Like, I don't have to build a test suite for this. Because the other thing that I can do is um, is right here. So for file and file list, we're going to check and see if the MP4 exists. So we're going to get our input file, we're going to get our output file. And then file exists. Check if a file exists. Uh, so this is the other thing, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, but I want to get more in the habit of, is just putting the code sample that I really want. Just like, do this. Because um, right now I've got to read through this stuff and that's kind of like, that slows me down a little bit or whatever. Um, Sorry, Python 3.4, the path load module. Oh yeah, I basically just, yeah. So again, I got this from this Stack Overflow answer. Um, and I just haven't gone back. Oh, I spent some time working on one of these. Um, so, since I'm in there, PLD. Uh, 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 uh. Um, because what we can do, I only want to make the MP4 file if the mp4 file doesn't already exist. Because if it does exist, and you send the command in, actually, I don't know if it skips it. By the way, this, all right, so audio, y'all need to get, like if you got a playlist, like if I scroll down, it plays more songs. But if I don't scroll down, it only plays the first five songs. Or seven songs. Like, play the, play the playlist, man. And I think that happens on playlists that I make too. So it's like, it's this weird thing where it's like, oh, here, actually, we're going to make a note. Uh, here. Where's our Twitch checklist? I'm not going to put it in any particular place right now. I'm just going to put it here. Um, when setting up audio. Make sure to expand the window. So multiple tracks play. Eventually I'll download them 
Right now I'm playing off their web player. Um, eventually I'll download them just so I don't have to mess with that as much and I can maybe do other stuff. I don't know. Uh, so path to file, path exists, path, there you go. Oh, that should probably be over here. That should probably be over here. Whoops. So, MV4 test. Sounds good to me. If the output path exists, so if not, and again, this is so this is where it gets into a little bit of like, I have to look at this stuff manually and get this like it's, and there are ways to to mock. mock that's the other term, stub and mock. Um, like if I was really gonna like work on this and work on this and make it like, you know, get 100% test coverage. I'd have to figure out how to mock the file system to do that stuff. And like, I, I've never mocked the file system in Python. How do I mock the file system in Python? Unit test. Um, fake file system with third party. So that party is Google. Okay, fake SF. So that's probably worth looking at. Um, from 2014, so we have 36 ups on it. See, that's the thing, it, it, it feels like not a lot of people, oh, here. Sir, I can three, mock. You can use this for a file system or anything else. Interesting. Um, oh, maybe I have messed around with this before. Mocking a web server with a flask. Okay, that's, oh, and also there's only one. Ha! <laughs> Okay, there's one sentence there. So yeah, I haven't really mocked stuff with Python before. Um, okay, yeah, so I'm not gonna mess with that now, but it's a, it's a good thing to keep in the back of the brain for doing this, is how is how to mess with this. Um, but so for me right now, like I've, uh, one, I'm gonna need to import the path stuff. Pi check file exists. Import is going to be this. Oh, nope. This. And I do my froms below my imports. Um, so this is one of those where the test is going to be manual. Um, and so, if it, so I'm getting the output path, and I'm checking to see if it's a file. And if it's not a file, I'm going to make it. If it is a file, I'm gonna skip it, right? Um, and so this is actually, so originally I was just gonna not do an else, but like, I can actually do this, because I, sh I should see, there are a few MP files, oh no, but the MP files are gonna be different names. Um, That's not gonna hit anything. Oh, uh, maybe it's gonna hit that one that we had. Yep, already have that Sailor Moon one. So we did that. So there we go. So we just tested it. So now I'm pretty confident that if I run this and actually just send these commands out, it will slowly but surely build all these MP4 files for me. And I've got the script so that as I get more um, videos coming down, I can I can just run the script again and not have to worry about like going on the command line and doing the FFmpeg thing to, to fire them up. Um, so it's pretty slick, it's not bad at all. And this so this is where a little bit of the of the part of me that just wants the single file happens because I kind of just want to move this file over into that directory. And just have or like have it sitting somewhere in that directory, like right above it. 
by itself without the test file, but I don't want to divorce it from the test file. I want the test to be there. And then also I really like the idea of the test running again prior. So like I could go back and, and mush all the scaffolding together. Um, in fact, maybe someday I'll do that. Like try and figure out a good way to just like get it set up so you can just copy and paste. Um, I'm not gonna mess with that now. Um, Cause like right now I'm just gonna run this uh, for real. And so like Python external process. Um, And so this is another one that I need to go through at some point and do a little bit of cleanup on. Cause like this actually captures standard out, which is fine. Um, oh, oh wow. It just broke for me. That's interesting. Um, in this case, I don't really need to run it that way. Oh, crap. Crap, 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 crap. So this is run, but it's gonna want all those individual things. Um, capturing logging. Getting the output now. Um, what I want is just to send a single string to the output instead of instead of having to split it into individual things. Uh, okay, there you go. Passes the command and arguments to your system shell. This is nice because you actually run multiple commands at once. For example, how realistic genius, you have to manually handle escaping the shell characters, spacing, etc. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna have to deal with, oh, but it's already, I think it's already gonna be an okay string. Oh, I'm losing it. You gotta import, so here's the trick, this doesn't work without importing OS. That's one thing I wish people would do, and I'm gonna edit this in just a second. Um, so like, this line does not work. I'm 80% sure. So like if I put, so we've got our command, and we're just gonna run our command. But it's gonna say OS isn't there. OS is not defined, because you need to do this. O P Q R. This might actually fire off. I think this is gonna fire off. Yeah. Uh nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. There we go. So it's firing up and it's running FFmpeg right now. Um I wonder if that first one is. I think you freaky. The antwood. So I think we've come up here. Yeah, so here's, it's building the MP4 right now. Um, that's super cool. So it's working, but we're gonna change this. I, that is like, I don't understand. Um, like this purports to be a, a line of code that works, but it doesn't because you can't run this without OS imported. Um, I'm not gonna fix all oh, well. Hmm. Uh, okay, I'm gonna add this. Yeah, the subclass yeah, the subprocess module. See we're given the line, but we're not given the thing to do it. So like give the full line. So if I copy and paste the code, obviously you'd want to change whatever in here. And it doesn't even talk about the OS module. Okay, so we're gonna make a couple edits here while that definitely makes stuff. So anyways, that's the that's the script. Um and again that I, like I talk a lot when I do these, but if you if you, we didn't make that much, 
and it would have gone much fat and just you know would have gone much faster if I wasn't in there talking. But like that's testing code. Um, so, and it's it's that step by step stuff that I really. Uh, it it took me a little bit to was it, I hadn't done that much testing, and so I was kind of all over the place. And then like this kind of step by step stuff because I kept kind of jump way forward. And so the whole thing coming in of like just doing this, like staying one step away from green and doing the smallest thing possible in the shameless green. Like I didn't know how to process that. Um, but I was like, okay, I'll give that a shot. And really quickly that got into my head as like, it just makes sense for me and it feels really good because you're just, it's a smooth, like it's again, it's that smooth transition in one direction. And then if you ever have to jump back, you only have to jump back one space and it's more, and, it's, and so it's still loaded in your head. Um, so I'm a big fan. Uh, credit Sandy Metz. And I think that's it for this. It's just gonna run that. I'm gonna edit that. Uh, I'll do that off stream because I like I'll spend some time making sure I'm getting everything in the right place. But for me, when you write this kind of answer and you put in a line of code and it calls a module, put in the module. I'm gonna edit that. We'll see what happens. Um, maybe somebody edits back out, but I can't imagine why you would edit it back out. Um, I don't think anybody would. Uh, yeah. So. I'm trying to think if I want to do anything else tonight. Let's see. Uh, probably not. Twitch ideas. Oh, I can go to Twitch ideas over here now. Twitch ideas. No, no. No. I'm trying to think if there's anything like super just bounce around y. I think no, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go make some gifts. Um It's gonna be interesting making gifts on the screen though, because I've got a 1080 screen going right now because of the way I switched everything up. I gotta get the card in for the HD, and I don't know if that's gonna affect the gifts. Um, I don't think, yeah, no. Yeah, I'm just gonna go make some gifts. Um, okay, cool. Uh, that'll do it for this stream for the evening. Uh, I'll come back in a little while and do some gifts, uh, chill out to some music, and just uh, go. Stay green, Johnny boy. Uh, Y'all have a good night, take it easy. Uh, it's super cool because I I think I'm gonna hit the right button to actually make the screen go to the thank you thing without actually having to like go click on the mouse and do all this stuff. So cross your fingers and have a good night and be kind. <laughs>